another controversial moment in boxing. What can I say? Um, Lomachenko and Devin Haney post reaction video. Uh, I have a lot to say about it. I'm going to keep it kind of short. Uh, I'm going to kind of go on the outskirts a little bit. And I want to talk about a couple things before we get into this. Um, I come from two worlds. I come from two worlds where um, they don't like each other very much for whatever reason. I don't get it. I don't understand it. If you are a true combat sports fan uh, and, and, a, and a diehard combat, you got to love both sides. You got to love boxing. You got to love mixed martial arts. It's just the way it is. Or else you're just not. Like you're either a boxing fan or you're a mixed martial arts fan. You're not a combat sports fan. You know, so I I, I have a diehard um, thirst for boxing. That's what I was born and raised in. Okay, that's where that's where it all started for me. I also have a diehard heart thirst for mixed martial arts because I transcended into that. You know, so when I see like the constant push pull and the constant push pull on Twitter and stuff, it's it's almost disheartening because you get the mixed martial arts fans that kind of come over to watch the big fights and they think they know what they're talking about. Then you get the boxing fans that come over to watch the mixed martial arts fights during the big fights and they think they know what they're talking about. So this is why I don't watch this. This is why I don't watch that. It's like it's it's almost to the point now. It's like all right, guys, like you either you either you either you're either in or you're out. You either love martial mixed martial arts or you don't. You either love boxing or you don't, you know, but when I see these people coming on and they're saying like, well, this is why we don't watch boxing. This is why boxing sucks. This is it's funny because they don't calculate one important factor. Um, boxing's 10 to 12 rounds that a judge has to judge. OK, and it's not excusing them. Every round should be judged properly, but it's not excusing them. Mixed martial arts has three to five. Okay, five rounds in a in a in a in a championship fight or a main event. Otherwise, majority of the time, ninety percent of the time, it's three round fights. So they got three rounds to to score, and they butcher at least one or two of them every card. Okay, boxing has ten to twelve. They butcher them too, but majority of the people only watch that main event. Like when you tune into. Devin Haney and Lomachenko, how many of you guys can actually name the people on the on the undercard? You, you didn't watch it. You're either at your friend's house, you're drinking beers, you're hanging out, then all oh, guys, the main event's coming on, and then you all go and you hover to the TV for the main event, and if that one decision is bad, it blows up the whole night, where in mixed martial arts, you get eight to ten fights on the card, you'll have two, three horrible decisions, but then it'll kind of milk its way out of the system because there were there were there were more fights involved. So it's kind of ludicrous to to just constantly talk about boxing judging when they got to do ten to twelve and mixed martial arts has to do three to five. So you either love mixed martial arts or you don't. You either love boxing or you don't. There's got to be a world where we can all love each other. We can all respect the art. If a boxer goes into a mixed martial arts cage, they're getting worked. If a mixed martial artist goes into a boxing okay, uh, ring, they ain't got a shot in hell. Agree on that. Let's enjoy the fights. Let's enjoy both art forms and respect everybody and respect the fighters. So that's not the problem. The problem here is we cannot get the system right. We can't get on the same page with the judging. Now, when I tell you that I'm unbiased, I'm very unbiased. My video that I broke this fight down... I picked Devin Haney by unanimous decision. That was my video. I was wrong, okay? I believe that Loma won that fight. I picked him. My pick was right. My pick was right by the way he won, but I believe I was wrong. I believe Lomachenko won that fight. Now, I didn't bet the fight for the mere fact that I said I didn't want nothing to do with it. I thought there was no value on Devin Haney at all. I did think Haney would win the fight by a very close decision, um, so I took two separate bets. I took um, fight goes to unanimous decision by minus 145, which I was sweating. I thought it was going to be a split. Um, and then I took a parlay in another bet for mixed martial arts that was fight goes to decision. So those of you that are members at the MadLabMMA.com, you cash both of your bets. Congratulations on that. But here nor there, I scored the fight 115 to 113 for Lomachenko. That's the way I scored the fight. You guys can agree. You guys can disagree. It's open form. I want to hear what you guys have to say below. Before we get into any further into this, please like, subscribe, and comment below. These are the things I want to hear. Like, I want to hear how you guys had this fight scored. I had it 115-113. When you have a fight, though, when you have, you know, majority of Twitter, including myself, going into a certain round, in a late round, saying... Good luck scoring this fight. Even Louis DeBella. 
was on Twitter going, I would hate to be a judge. Good luck scoring this fight. Like, everybody thought, like, the rounds were so close that you can kind of teeter, you can make an argument each way. But then, when the decision's read, it was the biggest robbery in history. So, you can't, kind of, you can't have it both ways, right? You can't sit there and say, shit, man, like, how are you going to score this? How do you score that round? The only, like, major, major decisive round for me, like, decisive, like, there was no way in hell that they, they can go the other way, was round number 10. I gave that to Loma. I don't see any way you can give that to, to Haney. And Dave Moretti, lo and behold, gave it to Devin Haney, which was criminal. That was the most criminal scored round of the entire card. Then, obviously, the 116-112, I didn't see that. I didn't see that either way. I had 115-113 in a very close fight for Loma. That's why I personally had it. Could you have made arguments in certain rounds? 1,000%. But at the end of the day, like when you have a fight like that, I mean, uh, would I have been happy with a draw? I mean, I think at the very worst, it should have been a draw. Like, like I don't think Haney should have won. But if they gave it a draw, I could see a little bit more of an argument, for, you know, with that. But as far as, like, a robbery, like, if you guys think that was, like, a full-blown robbery, you guys haven't been watching boxing long. Like, I've seen much worse than that. Like I said, I'm not excusing the judges. I, the judges were were wrong. They, they, they All three of them got it wrong. Um, but there were some really, really close rounds up there up to the last couple of rounds that were very questionable. Like I was even tweeting about it saying, you know, a close round. I gave it to Loma, but I can make an argument for Haney this round close round. I gave it to Haney, but I could make an argument for Loma, you know? So like the rounds were really, really close to the point. I kept, I kept saying to myself, like, there's no way this is going to be a unanimous decision. Like all markings were telling me that this thing was going to end up being a split decision. So I was kind of shocked when you went unanimous, when it went unanimous, I thought for sure it was Lomachenko. I thought for sure. I said, there's, there's, there's no way. Like when I heard 115, 113, and when I heard 116, 112, you know, even though I thought that, that was egregious, I figured, all right, well, there's no way it could be 116, 112 Haney. No way. You know, so, um, yeah, I don't agree with the decision. You know, I don't agree with it. What happened in the fight that surprised me? You know, <coughs> Now, if you're talking from the perspective where I think Loma won and why I think Haney lost, I just don't think Haney fought his fight. I think Haney fought the fight that Loma wanted him to fight. Haney is very known for keeping his range. He's an outfighter. He he uses his jab a lot. Um, and I don't think he did that very well. I think he was afraid of the speed of Loma once he got in there. Like I said in the video when I broke this down, I said he's never been in there with someone like Loma. It's very You can't mimic him. You can get people into the ring and into training camp to try to mimic him, but it's completely different in when you're in there with Lomachenko. The way he moves, the way he cuts angles, the way his, his hand speed is, the way he gets into the mid-range and all of a sudden he pops right inside and then he pops out. Um, you know, how he fights off the break. Like, it's very, very different when you're in there. And I think that was giving Haney a problem where Haney was actually feeling a little safer, closer. And that's not the way he fights. He doesn't fight like that. He's an outside fighter. He likes to stick you with your jab, stick with the jab, stick with the jab. What did he do good, very good? And what I personally think why the judges gave him the fight, which, like I said, I don't agree with I think they, they really counted that body work. Like, he, he was landing some good shots to the body. Um, and, you know, I can understand from a viewing perspective, people that don't watch a lot of boxing, they don't really view the body shots that much. Everything's like, you know, they think it's punches, punches, punches. They're viewing to the head, to the head, to the head. You know, he did some very, very good body work in that, um, in that fight to make up for what he couldn't do on the outside. I really do believe the reason why he fought off his game, the reason why he wasn't out fighting a lot, the reason why he wasn't like really utilizing his jab and moving is because he, he wasn't dialing in Lomachenko in the mid-range and then him getting inside. He just somehow kept sliding in. I think the speed was throwing him off. I think he, 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 um, he didn't think he was as powerful as he was. Uh, and Loma was getting in first and getting out la and getting out last. You know, so um, that's 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 the issue I think he had. What did Loma do that was that that was so well? Is he did what he always does? 
The only thing I saw different with him is he didn't download the intel. He didn't take that long to download the intel. He got a very early start in this fight, and that's not like Loma. Loma really sits there. He calculates you. He dials you in. He tries to set these little landmines <laughs> to see what you're biting on, this and that. But I gave Loma round one, which was odd because Loma, like I said, he will sit there and he he will teeter that hand and he sometimes he won't even throw a punch in the first round. He'll throw like one, two or three punches and he just wants to feel you out and see what you're doing. And he ended up winning that round. I think he realized that he was going to be able to bait him in early. I think, um, you know, once he started having early success going inside, he tasted Haney's power. He saw that Haney wasn't as fast as he should have been. Like Haney even looked a little slow. He looked a little behind you know the step a little bit so it wasn't the game plan that Haney went in with and if it was it was a terrible game plan it was a terrible game plan Loma was able to do whatever he wanted to do um the only thing that he he couldn't avoid was the body work you know Haney was doing a very good job at the body work and that's where he felt comfortable that's where he felt comfortable I feel like he needed to cover up I think he was fighting too low it feels like he was fighting down to the stature of Haney instead of fighting large. You know, when you have that size advantage and, and, and you're fast and you have a good defensive prowess about you, and you have the long, you have to fight large. You got to fight big in there. He was fighting a little too small. You know, I felt like he was trying to come down to, to Loma's level and it was making it very easy for Loma to get inside and, uh, and do what he wants to do. So, you know, like I said, you know, optics were not good for Haney. You know, he did look confused in there. He, he looked like he was tripping over his feet in some spots. Um, he kept the rounds very close. When, but whenever, Lo, whenever Haney would fire something, Loma would come back with two. If Haney would fire one shot, Loma would come back for two. If, if Haney would fire three shots, Loma would come back with four. You know, so I just feel like the ending of the exchanges were in Loma's favor and the optics were better. But I think the judges were scoring body work a lot more than they probably should have scored it. I mean, I think they took a lot out of the equation. They took a lot out of the equation. Lomachenko was dictating the dance in the majority of those rounds. He was. You know what I mean? And when you get a guy to bite on your style and fight like you, that's something that's got to be seen. When you're taking somebody out of their wheelhouse and you're making them fight your fight and they're, they don't have anything else in the bag. He had, that's the thing with Haney. He's young. You know, and that was my biggest issue with him coming into this fight. My biggest issue with him coming into this fight was not is he good. He's a very good fighter. Kid is now 30 and 0. You know, he's a very good fighter. But my thing was experience. You know, is he going to have an artillery of stuff in his bag of tricks that's going to be able to keep adjusting or is he going to keep circling back? I said that. Is he going to keep circling back? Is he going to run out of tricks and then having to circle back and start over again or circle back and start over again? Lomachenko has too many tricks, too many tricks, and he didn't have to adjust that much. Lomachenko did not have to adjust really at all in that fight. He just stuck to the blueprint. The problem was Haney stuck to the blueprint too. He he kept fighting Loma's fight instead of kind of forcing himself to say, look, all right, you, you know, you got that round. Now we're going to outfight. Now you have to get by my jab. Now I'm going to keep my jab out. He just couldn't do it. Like, he couldn't figure Loma out. And that's what makes Loma so special, man. That's what makes Loma so special. Heart-wrenching for me to see. I got to be honest with you. When I saw him backstage and he was crying, they put the towel over his head. I know his father said that it was uh, Christmas came early <coughs> for Haney. I didn't see Haney's camp um, address the media yet. Um, but uh, I'm going to watch that when I get off of this. But... Look, man, this is boxing. It's it's it was a it was a lot of rounds were very very close, but the wrong guy won. I, I personally believe the wrong guy won. I, I I mean, it's not the most egregious fucking cards I've ever seen. I've seen some horrible cards. I mean, we talked about Meldrick Taylor, how they stopped the fight on the kid when he was on his way to a clear victory against Julio Cesar Chavez. You know, so I, I've seen some terrible decisions in boxing. I've seen some horrendous decisions in mixed martial arts. Um, it wasn't the worst, but it could have been one of the most detrimental to somebody's legacy. You know, this is a guy in Lomachenko who's 396 and one on the amateur level, possibly the greatest amateur boxer we've ever seen. Um, a guy who took, who tied for the fastest to win a title when he probably should have won it against Salido, but Salido, like I said, was fighting dirty. Uh, a guy who's a two-time gold medalist, a two-time world champion, a three-weight division champion, and then to come back at 35 years old and be able to win all the belts 
that would have been I'm not saying he would have retired, but that would have been the ending of an amazing legacy, already amazing legendary legacy. And I feel like he got robbed of his moment. You know, that's where the robbery came in. The robbery came in in the, the, the what was at stake for such a legendary fighter. Now, you can go back and you can look at the Katie Taylor fight, right? I thought Katie Taylor would win that fight just for the mere fact of the business of it all. She's the best fighter that Ireland ever seen, female. Um, she's fighting for the first time in her homecoming. I thought that, that Cameron would have to literally knock her out to get that decision. Cameron won that fight, and even when that went to the cards, I was nervous. I was like, you know what? I hope they get this right because this, you know, they, they got to get this right. They got it right, and that was like I even said on Twitter that was good for boxing. Like I understand it was the home ten, the homecoming of your the best female fighter in Ireland. Conor McGregor was there. The place was packed. Every time Katie Taylor threw a jab, the crowd erupted like she knocked her down. You know, and I was I, I, I was trying to make excuses for Katie Taylor in each round. I was like, you know, I could see, you know, she was getting off, you know, she was throwing more combinations. But no, she lost that fight and they got it right. They got it right under a lot of pressure in front of Ireland. You know, that big homecoming crowd for Katie Taylor. This fight. She, so she does not that she deserved to lose that fight, but she rightfully lost that fight. That's what I'm trying to say. This fight, he did not deserve to lose that fight. I think that he deserved to win that fight. I think he deserved the cherry on top of his legacy, you know, that legendary legacy. And I and that's where the that's where the shame comes in. You know, if he was just a normal fighter and you know a, a really good fighter, an undefeated fighter, not that it makes it any better, not that it makes it any worse. But when you've given to boxing what Lomachenko has given to boxing, how so many kids have looked up to him and he's patterned the way with all these nuances that he's some of these nuances he's created to see him get taken like that taken from his plate. Yeah, it stings a little bit. Yeah, that stings a little bit, especially for someone like me who's who's watched him his entire career. And I've watched Haney's entire career. And I have nothing but love and respect for Haney. It's not Haney's fault the judges gave it to him. That's what you guys got to understand. It's not his fault. It's not the fighter's fault which way the judges go. You know, they go in, they fight the fight, the judges view the fight, and that's what it is. I got a lot of respect for Devin Haney. But I do think he he lost that fight. And I do think that um, Lomachenko was taken, you know, a part of a something that would have been a, a, a really phenomenal addition to his resume and a cherry on top to his legacy so that's my thoughts on the fight overall you know good fight i know a lot of people were like it's not too action-packed when you get two guys that high level if you know boxing and you like boxing you you really enjoyed that fight because i did enjoy that fight i thought it was a human chess match you know um it it, it was just it, it was you know it didn't end the way uh, it should have ended, you know. So that's it. Uh, I will jump back on here. I'll be making a lot more of these videos, a lot more breakdowns, a lot more reaction videos for mixed martial arts and boxing. Um, you know, subscribe to the channel, comment below, uh, like the video. Um, and that's it, guys. Enjoy the night. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll talk to you later.